millennials, it's time to rock your life. Motivation, inspiration, empowerment. Here's your host, Joshua Dwight. You're listening to Life Trip Radio. What's going on, Life Trip Radio world? So glad you're tuning in to Life Trip Radio once again. I am your host, Joshua Dwight. We have another pretty amazing Joshua on the show. We have Joshua Tungle today, and this is a guy that I just uh, connect with really well. We have a lot in common, and, um, you know, he's just all about letting your hair down, coming into harmony with who you are and, and your life, and just all about enjoying life, man. And I just have to say that I can I could just go there real, real easy. I know you're going to love the show. I hope, uh, I hope you could just uh, take a little bit of time let your hair down and just listen to this so if you don't know who joshua tungle is joshua is the author of the secret to awesomeness and so you thought you knew as a rising thought leader josh is a popular speaker who has spoken to countless people throughout the united states and abroad he speaks on topics such as religion spirituality and personal development offering new paradigms relevant for our day and age like i said This is going to be an amazing interview. You're going to really enjoy it. You're going to really get some help about how to become at harmony with yourself and and just how to enjoy life. So let's go straight to the interview. I know you're going to love this. Joshua Tungle is here. Thank you so much, brother, for coming on. I really appreciate you uh, accepting the interview and uh, coming on and sharing with us, bro. Oh, for sure, Josh. Thanks for having me, man. It's good to be on the show. Yes, sir. Let's do this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's uh How's Killer Cali going, man? How is California um, right now? Killer Cali is cool, dude. The weather's pretty chill. Uh, it's been pretty hot these days, but actually looking out the window right now, it's all like blue. <laughs> so I don't know what happened, but but it's good. I love I love being here in California. That's so good, dude. I have a lot of love for people in California because I have no idea how I've developed such a following from California, but I would say actually, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, I look at the show uh, stats and everything, and about 45% of my listens come from California right now. So, oh, that's good, dude. yeah, so I got a lot of, I got a lot of love for Cali and I also get really jealous whenever I interview you guys because it's so beautiful out there. So. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's all good, dude. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, how's life going right now, man? What's been on your plate lately? And just, uh, just kind of share with us what's been going on. Yeah, for sure, dude. Uh, life's good, dude. Um, just chilling. You know, my wife and I just got back from Mexico and Catalina. We were celebrating our four-year anniversary. Um, just been busy with different things, uh, doing a bunch of interviews, just promoting my new book, uh, doing a lot of YouTube videos, and focusing a lot on that lately. My podcast. Um, some writing and some coaching on the side. So, very, yeah, co- very cool, very cool. So, so are you speaking in in many places right now? Or are you just pretty much devoting a lot of time towards developing messages and, and talks and stuff like that? Yeah, more of that. I've been kind of laying low with just the speaking stuff. Um, there's a lot I could say about that, but I've just been more focusing on you know just my wife and I and just getting my material out there just with the social media and just kind of been laying low with some of the speaking engagement these days, you know, so. Very cool. Very cool. So, and I I have a feeling that we'll probably get into this uh, a lot more in the future of this uh, episode here, but how did you get started doing what you're doing now? And, you know, what was your motivation behind it? Just kind of take us from, from start to finish to, to where you are right now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as for public speaking, um, I've been doing that since I was like 17. Um, And then I started doing like traveling, was in my 20s and then I uh, started doing my whole YouTube thing like back in the day almost when it first started and then um, uh, just wanting to help people on their spiritual journey and just you know especially those who grew up in like a fear-based religion and but I started pumping out like a lot of my YouTube stuff um, when I was back in the Philippines because the, <laughs> the stuff that I was putting out was obscure uh, you know, upsetting a lot of the religious groups and institutions. So, <laughs> yeah. And since many of them were trying to like stop me from speaking at, at certain places, you know, I just decided to take advantage of the social media and YouTube, you know, because I knew that I had a message in my heart that I wanted to share. Um, as for my writing, it's funny because I actually started my first book back in the Philippines in 2010 and pretty much almost finished it. Uh, but then I had like this radical shift in my views about like thinking everything, dude, and and. You know, just not knowing what to believe anymore. This was when I was 
yeah, I was like a missionary at the time, you know, so it was kind of a crazy time, and um, I wasn't sure what to believe anymore, so I stopped writing, um, even when I was almost done with my book, and then I went through a period of questioning, uh, <laughs> confusion, soul-searching, and then I got back into writing in 2013 when I got here to America, and I've written two books since then. Very cool, very cool. So you're doing the whole, you know, we've had people on the show before that's definitely been been through the whole uh you know, religious ringer, if you will. You know, you even mentioned uh, kind of making the whole religious crowd mad, which I will uh, add in my two cents that that's not a <laughs> that's not a hard thing to do there. Uh, <laughs> you talk about love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh man, you can talk about anything. You can talk about anything in the world, and someone's gonna be mad at you. It's just it, it's just how it works, man. It's just how it works. No, no, it's all good. Man, uh, I, you know, for people that don't know about you, Joshua, um, you know, usually I ask a question right about now about maybe a certain uh, adversity or challenge that you've recently overcome, and and no doubt we may still get to that. But um, I don't know if if some people listening may know about the unique challenge maybe you were that you were born with, uh, and I've okay. seen some videos about it. Maybe maybe you know take a second and talk about that a little bit and how you've. Uh, overcome that from you know the start of your life to where you are now yeah yeah for sure so i mean that obviously wasn't really because that happened when i was born <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so you know your audience is you know i was actually born with one hand and so that was like a really big challenge for me um because i know like there are some people who don't really struggle with with insecurity issues but i did growing up and so um, being born with one hand it's actually more of like an underdeveloped right hand so i still have like little fingers and stuff like that but um, it didn't really stop me from functioning, like having a normal life, but it was more of just like a, like a self-conscious issue. I just, you know, I would struggle a lot with the stairs and stuff like that and, you know, being really insecure about like whether or not girls would like me. And so <clears throat> I had a hard time growing up uh, for most of my childhood, pretty much of just uh, like just wondering, like, will I have a normal life? You know, will I be able to have like a regular job? And, um, it's more of just like overthinking, you know, about things that are really not that important, you know, and I'm just wondering if I'll ever get in a relationship with somebody. And so a lot of these things were um, just bringing me down while I was growing up. And uh, but thankfully, I was able to overcome a lot of those challenges. And, and thankfully, I even married a beautiful woman. So <laughs> you know, who loves me for who I am and um, just makes me, you know, just sees me for who she just sees my heart. So it's pretty cool. And you know, just even speaking, I remember back in the day, so I always hide my hand in my pocket, um, even when I would do public speaking, which is kind of awkward, but it was, that's how bad it was for me, because I felt like um, when I when I speak in public and I take my hand out of my pocket, it felt like the whole world was looking at it. That's just the way I felt, you know, even though it wasn't true, And um, but I was able to overcome a lot of those challenges a couple of years ago, and, and I write about that stuff in my book, and um, it, it's crazy, dude, just... I've, just it's been pretty good i've been able to grow a lot through this and just appreciate a lot of things in my life and have compassion for a lot of people who have similarities and so when i put uh, some of my videos out you know just me talking about my my struggles and insecurities i get like i get a whole bunch of messages from people like telling me their stuff that they're insecure about you know with with their nose and their ears or their children being born with deformities as well and and it's a beautiful thing to just have people feel safe with me and to let them know, like, hey, you know, even though I've overcome a lot of my fears, you know, I have some weak moments, I have some insecure moments and moments where I still could get conscious about it for like a second or two. And it's weird, but it's like it's still there sometimes. But I, I, I've seen how far I've come. So it's been, it's, been a, it's been an interesting journey with that and being able to help people with those things. Now I know that you said you talk about this a lot in your book, and I'm sure that you detail out detail that out a lot. And I, and I want you know all of Life Trip Radio listeners to go and look up those uh, those books so you can kind of follow Joshua's story here. But give us give us just a couple of uh, of details about how you know internally you you dealt with this and that you overcome those things whenever they come up or and whenever they came up in the past. I mean, I know obviously marrying a beautiful woman helps a lot uh, with the morale. <laughs> You're probably yeah, like. I'm like Follows one away when I have none. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That that was it. That's all you needed, and then you, you know morale. <laughs> Marry so much and everything's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marry an attractive person, and that's it. No. I, so, <laughs> so, but what were some of the details of how you overcame that and how you overcome that now? Whenever those issues arise. Yeah, you know, um, 
like, I think a lot of it had to do with, you know, just instead of asking, like, I asked the why question a lot, you know, when I was growing up, like, why me, why me, you know, and like, what did I do, <laughs> you know, to deserve this, and um, I, I just felt so different, that was the thing, I just felt really different, even though it was not true, because I was very normal, I was like a normal kid, but um, I just felt different, and so instead of focusing on the why, I started focusing on the what, and I started thinking about, like, what I could be thankful for in my life, so, like, even if... Um, as I showed my video, showed my hand in the video that I put out not too long ago, um, like I still have like a palm. And so I, I noticed like I was still able to do a lot of things, you know, even with my underdeveloped hand, you know. So I don't know if you know this, but I also grew up like as a B-boy. I was a break dancer pretty much my whole childhood up until <laughs> I reached college. And, you know, I never, you know, my hand never stopped me from doing the, the things that any typical kid would want to do, like playing sports and all those things. Um, another thing that helped me other than gratitude was just uh, realizing that a lot of the, the fear and the self-consciousness was just all made up in my mind. You know, like it was just all like, oh, this person is going to think this, they're going to be disgusted by it, no girl would like me. And, and that's just what worry does. Worry is just a bunch of stories that we make up in our head. And I just had to like put that aside and realize, okay, I think it's just me, you know, creating all these things. Sure, there there are some jerks out there who were pretty cruel at times while I was growing up, but not everybody's like that. And um, so I had to get rid of that that assumption. Another one was just like, you know, just who gives a rip <laughs> what, what other people think, you know, this is me, this is who I am. Um, and just learning how to love myself and appreciate in the sense of just my uniqueness. And, um, and I have a really interesting story that, that, that's in my book that I just don't want to spoil yet, but yeah. yeah. So I guess you just have to read the book. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you, well, you've got me on pins and needles, so I've got to, I've got to definitely pick <laughs> up the book, and I know, uh, I know all the people listening are definitely going to do that as well. And so, uh, awesome, man, awesome, Josh. A, a, as you know, um, this show is is particularly driven towards millennial age people um, and helping them with life and and overcoming obstacles yeah. and things of that nature. Uh, what would you say is the number one obstacle facing the millennial generation today? Um, you know, I don't know what the number one obstacle is, but, you know, just like one of the dopest things about our generation is the crazy technology we have, right? So, you know, at the same time, even though it's cool, it's a big <laughs> hindrance, you know, because, you know, even when I go around, just go, you know, just going out to eat the other day with my wife, you know, we're just constantly seeing people on their phones. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there are people who I see where, you know, you just got to wonder, are we having more attachments to, like, the gadgets that we have rather than spending quality time with another human being, you know, or the fact that um, it just seems like it's all about image these days, you know, and, and you know, when we look, you know, we want the whole world to see us in a certain way in our profiles and our fan pages, and it's crazy because, you know, I've met, I've met people who, who act and talk differently in person than how they are online, you know, I'm just like, what the hell is that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, exactly. like where's, the, where's the authenticity, you know what I'm saying? And so... You know, I mean, I get it that we want people to see our good side and stuff, but just like in my writings and in my videos, I, I try to tell people, I try to show people like who I am, like my, my weaknesses and my struggles, because I want them to be able to to relate and understand, hey, you know, I'm just as human as you are. And um, at the same time, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a really, I'm a face-to-face person too. And so, you know, even I get, I don't like seeing people always on their phones or, or kids always just on their iPad playing video games and, like, I was a type of kid that always, you know, I grew up playing outside and riding bikes and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. And I'm just hoping, you know, when I have children, when my wife and I have children, that they won't be so attached to all these electronics at the same time. And, you know, I, I think there's a time for all that stuff, you know, because I obviously I put myself out on social media. But, you know, I think there's just there's something different about connecting with other human beings when you just got to put, put the electronics aside and stuff like that. And, um, and also just appreciate... Uh, just what we have, you know, because just our generation, dude, we got so much that comes to us pretty fast that, like, I know my parents didn't have this stuff that we have now. You know, they, they've had to work their butt off, you know, to, to get where they're at. And um, just thinking about how a lot of things got easier for, even for me, you know, people my generation, just with social media helping us out financially and, you know, with passive income and all these things that we're learning, I, I just... I just hope that our generation doesn't doesn't forget like how much our our parents and those you know before us have have paved the way to help us get to where we're at now. You know what I'm saying so. You know that that answer has actually been stated probably two or three other times by interviewers that I've had, and oh, I, nice. 
Maybe well, that is the number one option. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, it's starting to, to seem to me that, you know, at least to some of these thought leaders that I have on the show, that, you know, this is a pretty big thing to address. And I have a theory here, and I'm going to kind of step on a, a podium and play motivational speaker here for a second, and, and you kind of <laughs> chime in and, and help me with this. But I have a theory that the reason why sometimes we can be so dependent on these electrical devices, and and I'm just going to say, you know, no matter what kind of device or what kind of thing that we're doing at the time, really what it is is that we're we're not living in the here and now. We're not living in the moment. Sure. And so, you know, I think a lot of times the reason why we're we get so dependent upon these devices and cool technology and stuff is because really there's there's a majority of millennials in America, they have this internal thing to where they've learned not to live for right now, not to enjoy the moment. They're always waiting on what's going to happen, yeah. waiting on what's going to be in their future, waiting on what co- what they're yeah. who they're going to marry and and what kind of job they're going to have in the future instead of just enjoying putting the phone down putting whatever it is down uh, that's distracting them from what you know the reality is right now and just saying man yeah. i'm just going to enjoy what is right now and uh to me that's been one of the the biggest things in my life to really just find peace and find rest and to enjoy life if you will do, do you agree with that statement and yeah. what would you say about that yeah yeah i think so i agree with that you know i would even add on just like you know there could even be issues of of a fear of intimacy with people or being vulnerable with people. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, you know, it's easy, like, when you're just chilling with someone, like, at a table and then you're just playing with your phone, but, you you know, it's it's, it's not as easy to just be open and talking to somebody, letting somebody see your your struggles and your weaknesses. And, you know, because it's crazy because when when I see people who are on, even on YouTube, I, I see a lot of them evolve. Um, like with their personalities where they get more confident and all that stuff in their later videos, which is a good thing, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just wondering, like, you know, are they like that in private, <laughs> you know, like with, with people, you know? And, um, I mean, they can do whatever they want with their social media, but I'm just, all I'm, all I'm hoping for is that people will be as authentic as possible and just be themselves without trying to be a certain way just so other people will like them, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, like even for myself, like I've been putting out, because um, a lot of times people see a lot of my serious side. Um, I, I, I am pretty goofy in some of my videos, but I just like opened up a Vine. I don't know if you know that social media where you just have those little six second clips. And I just started putting out like videos of me doing humorous stuff, you know, and <laughs> that, that's a side that you won't see in a lot of my teaching videos, obviously. Um, but I'm like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I love to do. I love making people laugh. Right. You know, and um, I just want people to see that other aspects of me because I don't want to be labeled. This is Josh. He's this. He's just like a teacher or he just teaches religious stuff or, or, or metaphysics. You know, um, that's the thing. Like what you were talking about earlier, people like these labels. I don't I don't want to be labeled, but I don't blame it because labels help us identify things. But, but once again, I, I just want to break out of, you know, how people always want to perceive me. You know, because I am like a goofball, you know, <laughs> and I don't always want to be serious and talk about serious topics all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? But right. anyway, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, you know, you're hitting on a pretty a pretty key topic here. Let's let's dive into that a little bit more here. What would you say is a is a way for our listeners, you know, they're struggling with that self-worth thing. They're struggling with that, um, the identity of who they are, the identity of who they are and, and becoming comfortable with that. What are some tips that you can give our listeners on, you know, becoming comfortable with their identity and who they are when they look in the mirror and things of that nature? Yeah, you know, I mean, for me, right, it was more of like, um, as I mentioned earlier, just kind of counting your blessings, what you're thankful for, and, and just start you know, when you look in the mirror, just, I know there are some things that we all could struggle with, the things that we don't like about our bodies, but start looking at the things that you do like about your body. And when you start, start talking about, like, hey, I like my, my hair, or I like this, or whatever, I mean, it's it's interesting, but you do start to feel better when you start focusing on the positive things about yourself. Because I don't, I, I don't know if there's anyone that, like, totally, totally hates themselves, you know? I mean, maybe there might be a lot of negatives that we don't like about ourselves, but, you know, there's always something good that you can find if you look for it. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times people aren't looking for it. They're always looking for the bat. You know, so even though you have like this beautiful face, they're just looking at that one thing that they hate about themselves. And it just kind of like co- colors everything else of their perception of themselves. You know what I'm saying? So, and I would just encourage people like, start start looking at the things, start, start looking at yourself in the mirror and start talking to yourself and saying, 
hey, you know, I love this about you. Or even or even saying I love you to yourself while you look in the mirror, which could seem kind of awkward in the beginning, but, you know, it could be a beautiful thing when you when you actually look at yourself in your eyes in the mirror and, and you tell yourself that you love yourself. It could be very empowering in my opinion, you know, and give you a, a greater sense of self-worth and knowing um, just how valuable you are, you know, because they're, because you are, in my opinion. So, yeah, just focusing on the good. We are talking to the author of The Secret to Awesomeness, Joshua Tungle on Life Trip Radio. He is uh, really helping some people out right now. I know that he is. And so I really appreciate you listening right now. We are going to take a break. And right after that, we are going to come back with Joshua Tungle and keep him uh, dropping these wisdom bombs on us. So stay right here. Life Trip Radio listeners, I have some exciting news for you. As a listener of Life Trip Radio, Audible.com is now offering you a free month of Audible book services and a free audio book of your choice. I personally love my Audible account because I'm often on the go all the time and frankly, I multitask a lot. So sometimes finding the time to sit down with a book every day can be kind of challenging. However, I absolutely still love to read. Audible has helped me so much by giving me a huge selection of the books that I really want to read and puts them on my phone for me, ready to listen to anytime I want. You can take advantage of this free month of audiobooks and get your 100% free audiobook today by going to audibletrial.com slash life trip. That's audibletrial.com slash life trip. Go enjoy a free audiobook on me and one more time, that's audibletrial.com slash life trip. All right, Life Trip Radio, we are back with the author of The Secret to Awesomeness, Joshua Tungle. He he has just been able to be really transparent with us and helping us out with a lot of different issues and hot topics right now. We're going to just keep on rolling the way that we were. Joshua, can you tell me, who are some key people who've influenced your life, kind of lifted you up and helped you make you who you are today, whether that be, you know, uh, close people or whether it be far off mentors like, uh, like, people that you admire that are authors or, or things of that nature? For sure. Um, you know, I, I'm a hardcore reader. So, you know, like for back in the day, um, like when it comes to my religious journey, I know the writings of Brian McLaren helped me a lot at one time. Um, so there are people like Brian McLaren, uh, John Shelby Spong, uh, Bart Ehrman, a lot of the guys <laughs> that are like thorns in the sides to like religious fundamentalists. Um, I mean, I don't agree with everything that these people say, but <clears throat> they got me <clears throat> thinking about a lot of things that um, that I didn't really think about in, back in the day growing up as a religious person. Um, Carlton Pearson, who's actually a friend of mine, and he endorsed both of my books, uh, he was a big inspiration to me. He still is a big inspiration to me because his, his story... People just got to look him up on YouTube. It's crazy. But his story gave me a lot of courage at one time to just share a lot of my stuff publicly, no matter what the consequences would be. And um, just reading his material and listening to his talks was was really uh, big to me at one time. Um, Other important people are my close friends from the Philippines. Um, They were the ones who always had my back no matter what. They were with me through thick and thin when we were going through a lot of crazy things there in the Philippines with, uh, while we were receiving a lot of criticism for the stuff that we were teaching out there. And, uh, most of all, my family, you know, they, they've always shown me a lot of unconditional love and support through everything, you know, in my journey, you know, even if, um, whether they agree with me or not, but some of my views. Um, my family, have they've always been there for me, and I can't forget them at all. So. You just mentioned that you were, uh, you are a big breeder, and uh, not a breeder, but a reader. And, <laughs> <laughs> and a breeder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, have, they have a great breeding business out in California, and Joshua is heading that up. That's his next vocational passive income uh, experience. Exactly. We'll have him on the show about that next time. Uh, <laughs> but you mentioned that you're a big reader, and you know I share a like passion there. What's a book resource that you would highly recommend? I know you just mentioned a few, but what what would be a book resources yeah. that you would highly recommend for our to our audience here? Yeah, there's a bunch, dude. Um, I mean, one of the books that I recommend to a lot of people, I mean, because it could just help you out in life in general, is called uh, The Biology of Belief by Bruce Linton. And a lot of it has to do with, with just healing of the body, but it, to me, it could help out just life in general, showing on how our beliefs affect the biology, our biology, you know, and our bodies and stuff. It could even 
help you a person when they're pregnant and stuff like that. So it covers a lot of different topics. Um, another book that I like that's written at a popular level is called What the Belief Do We Know? And it's about a, a book that kind of bridges science and uh, spirituality. Um, another author that that has really helped me along my journey. I mean, I don't read these books these days, but it really helped me was the, the writings of Wallace Wall, Wallace Waddles. Um, his writings were were really helpful to me. Uh, Joseph Murphy, who wrote The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, a uh, very powerful book that was very influential to me in my my time of just studying metaphysics and things like that, especially in the self help genre. That helped me write my my second book. Lightro Radio listeners, I want to remind you that I have teamed up with Audible dot com. You can actually get these titles and plenty of other titles for uh, free this month. They're actually going to allow you to go on there and on my dime be able to get a free audio book. And so you can do that by going to audibletrial dot com slash life trip again that's audibletrial.com slash life trip go enjoy one of these free titles uh, on me josh we're going to go ahead and start wrapping it up here before we do what is some parting advice that you kind of give to our listeners to help them live just a full enjoyable life do more what makes you happy you know what i'm saying um you know always always live from the heart um have a heart of gratitude and just you know, the more you focus on the good things, um, the more life just looks brighter, dude. That's just how it is, you know. And, and so, yeah, life's good, you know, and uh, just, just have fun. Enjoy. Don't take life so seriously all the time. Very good. Very good, man. That's actually some of the simplest but best advice I've ever heard my uh, myself. And so, and I know I, I teach the same thing, man. That's really good stuff. Josh, how do we stay in contact with you and follow what you're doing? Uh, and if you want to, go ahead and make a plug for uh, for any books or merchandise you have at this point. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my website is uh, joshuatongo.com, uh, J-O-S-H-U-A-T-O-N-G-O-L. And so I have a bunch of my, my videos up there. And I'm all over social media, so you can find me on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter. I want to see my comedy stuff go on Vine. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then I just came out with my second book. So uh, my first book is called So You Thought You Knew. Um, that has to do with a lot of my, my religious journey, or I talk about, like, the big topics of religion and my faith. And my second one is called The Secret to Awesomeness, which is more of a self-help metaphysics book where I talk a lot about the big topics of life. Uh, that everybody deals with stuff like loving yourself, um, money, healing, following your dreams, and um, a whole bunch of other topics. So, yeah, that's how your audience could stay connected with me. So it'd be awesome. It just that's hit me up and message me if you enjoyed this interview. Yeah, very good. And so, can we purchase that book on JoshuaTungle.com? Can we purchase it on Kindle? Where, where can we purchase oh, that? It's on, it's on Amazon. I mean, you could you could get it on on Amazon as paperback, Kindle, and it's just as you mentioned, it's also an audio book on Audible.com. So. Very cool. Very good, man. Very good. Man, Josh, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Again, Life Trip Radio listeners, that is joshuatungle.com. It's not going to be hard to forget because Joshua actually has one of the coolest names in the world. Uh, I'm not going to mention another person that actually has a really cool name as well, Joshua. You know, So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty partial to the guy just because he has a really awesome name. So you need to go on Twitter. You need to follow this guy. You need to go on Facebook, like his stuff. Uh, and uh, and and I'm pretty interested to go check out the Vine stuff now because because uh, I, I guess Joshua Tungle has a little comedian in him as well, so we got to see that. Man, we really appreciate you stopping by, Josh. And uh, man, I really appreciate your openness to just share with us and your transparency. I know people have enjoyed it. I've gotten some stuff out of it, and I know other people that have listened and has as well. Oh, thanks, Josh. It was good to be on the show, bro. Keep up the good work. Awesome, man. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks, bro.